session and myself, Michael and Aaron will be around to help with any problems. Okay. Thanks. Um, I'll start off by uh, showing this um, uh, slide here, uh, which is just uh, a useful um, collection of links for the the material we're covering. What we're, what we're using is material from <clears throat> a project called Software Carpentry, which is explicitly intended to provide, as it were, lab safety for um, uh, science science postgrads. You know, the, the the software equivalent of do not stick your fingers into the puck sockets. So it, the, the, they have um, over uh, a number of years developed a number of courses uh, on the, the, the sort of material and we're going to shamelessly use their material. At one point we tried adapting it to, to make it more super specific but there was no benefit to that so we're just using the, the, their material uh, unchanged. The addition is us and the, the presentation of it and the, and the, and the demonstrators but all, all that we're covering here you can see for yourself on uh, the, the, these links. And I encourage you to do that. I'm going to rely on the fact that that's there uh, in, in the, in the, in the uh, time to come. Um, so uh, let's just go to this page. Good. Now, as Daniel mentioned, there is uh, a lot of material to cover. Uh, the, the this is the the, the, the nominal uh, um, the right page. This is the nominal. Um, timetable for this first session and you see it covers four and a half hours we only have three hours in this session now this has this the timing of this session has never really worked in previous years it's always been either too long or too short or, or whatever and last year uh, over zoom with all the difficulties of trying to keep track of who's um, keeping up who's not keeping up who's bored who's whatever um, it um, we ended up not covering you know, too, too little so what I'm going to do this time is uh, just go for it. I'm, go I'm going to, to cover the material really quite quite, quite briskly. I'm going to rely on the fact that uh, you've got material uh, on, on these web pages. Uh, we'll have recordings, a recording of this session, and uh, um, there'll be the, 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 the parallel channel uh, in the Zoom chat, which is something that you don't really get uh, face to face. So there are, there are advantages and disadvantages of doing this on Zoom, as you're all now very familiar I think we're going to take advantage of that to just power through the material I don't think I will actually get all the way to the, the uh, to, to the end but uh, I expect that um, if you have no experience of the shell then I think it'll be a bit of a hairdryer experience and uh, you might sort of zone out by, by the end but the flip side of that is if you do have some experience of the shell then the early bits might not um, make, you know, <clears throat> add an awful lot uh, to, to, to knowledge but we should have a chance I hope of getting onto the stuff that will extend what you uh, what you know so I hope that by going faster than might be planned <laughs> that might be ideal we will co cover a bit of something for, uh, for everything I um, have the um, Zoom chat open on uh, on the screen, but I uh, um, I think that the, the best way of doing this is, is as Daniel said, ask questions in Zoom. Someone, uh, one of the demonstrators, will come and uh, zoom to your um, your assistance. If there's sort of shouting in the in the chat, then I'll I'll, I'll see it and, uh, and 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 stop and, and and recap things. So if something doesn't make sense and it would be useful to uh, re repeat it, then do shout, do 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 yell out. Um, I'm le lecturing uh, on Zoom. I have ended up being quite pleased at the way the chat works in terms of being able to just keep an eye on on, on shouts and screaming uh, in, in the corner there in a way that wouldn't necessarily be um, working the exact same way in a face-to-face -face tutorial. Okay, enough talking, enough preferably talking. Um, are there any questions about that pacing, about what we're going to cover that I can address right now? Then we shall begin. Okay. Now let's see. This is the plan. Uh, there is a bit of setup. I hope you will have done this by now. Um, go, is it, if on this web page, I'll just go uh, back to here to remind you what the um, nope, I'll, I'll do it uh, here to remind you what the web page is. 
on that page you will find a, uh, a link to this page which is the setup page which uh, encourages you to download some files uh, and move the files to your desktop or the equivalent on your platform of choice I think um, I think everyone I think all three platforms have uh, have a desktop unzip the files and you know either double clicking on them probably most likely and you should end up with a folder called uh, shell de lesson data on your desktop now <clears throat> um, I hope everyone has done this preparatory step though the there was a, a sort of clinic on a Wednesday to uh, cover this <coughs> me. Um, I hope everyone is able to get to a terminal uh, or a shell. Um, it's called used to call terminal, but basically it's, it's, it's how to open a window such as. Where's my? cutting. Ah, yeah. Such as. Um, ah, as this, as, as this, which which is is the the thing we'll be using all the way through this to take commands and and, and see the, the the results. Um, I'm going to I'm going to pause for for a bit to check that we are in fact all on the same uh, page. Um. I see Daniel has mentioned, you know, struggling to get to let us know we can try and help. So what we want to, to get to is the point where, um, because I've got a visit, an image of a terminal there, an image of a terminal there, neither of them are the terminal, I'm going to get confused frequently. But um, we want to get to the point um, where uh, there is a, a file called um, ah, it's appeared um, in the desk in, in, in the desktop a file called shell lesson data. Um, that will involve some GUI type things to get to that point. This is a bootstrapping phase where, in order to to um, where in the face to face thing, demonstrator will be circling to get everyone to get in the same same spot. I see no shouting in the chat. Um, I'm taking it that that's good. I'm saying that's good. Okay. Um, so let's return to the um, the plan. Um, some introductions. Uh, basically, what the what the point is. Uh, you're all, I'm sure, familiar. You are all certainly familiar with using the the computer in front of you, using the the graphical interface, with Windows icons, mouse and pointers, and, uh, and all that stuff. And it's a very powerful way of using it, but it's not the only way. And what we're going to do uh, in this session is explore the other main way of using uh, your computer, which is uh, using the the terminal, using the shell, and typing commands uh, to uh, to get things done. Um, the advantage of this is that it can be a lot faster. It, it, the disadvantage is it, it takes a bit of learning in a way that uh, using the, the, the graphical interface sort of doesn't. Uh, the advantage is it's potentially much faster. Uh, it's able to do repetitive things uh, as an approach. It's able to do repetitive things um, quite naturally. And as part of that, it's possible to, to um, save and script your work uh, so that you can do those repetitive things uh, repeatedly. Uh, that means now and in a month and in six months and in two years when you're trying to work out what, you know, breaking the thesis and trying to work out what it was you did uh, all those years ago to get this set of results that you're trying to, to say are wonderful. Uh, so all those things are payoffs of using the, um, the, using the computer in this, using the interface in this initially rather strange way. Um, the, the shell is, an old program. It's been the versions of it have been around since, since the beginning of Unix and on, on other operating systems with a, a similar command shells. So the shell looks like like this. Uh, you see there. Oops. Um, there. Ah, 
what do I have to press to get the um, Um, you see there, an uh, invitingly blank screen with uh, a dollar character in the top left corner. That's the that's the prompt. That's the that, that's the um, talk to me uh, um, indicator. Um, now your shell may use something different. The 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 dollar sign is the traditional most basic most primitive uh, prompt but yours want your prompt might be substantially more uh, intricate it doesn't matter I'm just going to carry on using the prompt the, the, this basic prompt uh, for all these examples now I can type and things appear uh, there are some commands that, that mean something ls is a command called which I think it's been referred to as, as meaning list status but I'm not sure if that's actually uh, what it means. Anyway, you type that, you type ls, return, and you see the list of files that are in this directory. Um, now you may not see that exactly the same. Um, uh, um, you might see something, something more like that. Uh, this I, I'm, I'm using a Mac. You may have have a Linux or be using Linux, or you may be using WSL in, in Windows. You may see something, something, something slightly different. If you type the wrong thing, it'll just say I don't know what you're talking about, which is command not found. The KS isn't a command in the way the LS is. Um, now, what we're going to cover uh, here is a variety of tasks uh, over the course of the, the three hours. Um, the scenario we're talking. So, so I, I hope you're, you're, you're all seeing something a bit like what uh, I've shown on the, on the screen there. Thinking back to the, 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 this morning's uh, course, uh, the overall project is to get some experience of uh, navigating around the file system, uh, the, the idea of files and directories, how to create uh, files and directories, uh, how to find out things about files and how, how big is a file. You know, uh, that's basically what you want to know. Um, how to combine commands uh, in, in ways that are, uh, that are more powerful than, than one command is initially. I mean, the, the, the command I've just shown there, ls, shows the list of, of files in a directory, and that's it. Uh, um, by chaining commands together, you can uh, develop more complicated things, more powerful things, which uh, I hope, which I'm, I'm sure we're going to be able to have plenty of time to get onto. Um, if we have time, we'll also be able to, to, to uh, talk about how you um, iterate over files. So, so you have a, a large number of files, you want to do the same thing to all of them. There might be data files, for, is the obvious ex example. And at the very end, uh, how do you capture that in, 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 into a script, a, a little homemade program of your own, which can do uh, the, the same uh, tasks that you, d you did when you type the commands in, but do them repeatedly and possibly saved in a version control system that, that you're about to learn about. You're about going to learn about in the week after next. So the scenario that we're uh, talking about here is uh, a case of a, a marine biologist who had a, a pile of data data files, which have uh, are um, samples that have been taken from particular. Um, Part of the North, North, North Pacific, and she wants to to, to uh, she has thousands of files, and she wants to analyse these in a repeatable and intelligible way, uh, with the least effort uh, uh, possible. Okay, um, these key points in each of these of these chapters are quite 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 useful. I'm going to you know, make sure to spend a little time on on, on them each time. So, to summarise. This first uh, rather um, this, this first chapter where we're sort of set, settling down 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 and getting and get, getting going, the key things are we're talking about shell. The, the shell, slight funny name, but it just means the the, the interface that we use to type commands to, uh, to the computer to get it to do things. Um, we're going to be using Bash. There are other other shells that are available. Uh, but um, you'll most often see these days people refer to this particular shell called, called Bash, and and it's available in, in every version of Unix, uh, be it Mac, be it Mac OS, be it Linux, be it uh, the um, uh, shell, the Unix style thing inside Windows. 
you interface with that by typing things. That's that's the, the, there isn't a, a, a the, there really isn't much of a, an alternative mode of, of 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 interaction. You type things and you read the results. That's the the the, the, the key interaction. Um, the commands that you type often do look rather opaque. LS is not what you'd guess as the uh, the name of a command which lists a, lists the content of a directory. Um, the reasons for that are partly traditional. Unix um, just tolerates rather, rather odd names. Part of the other reason is uh, economy of effort. Uh, originally, uh, when you know, the, the, the computers in which Unix was first developed were quite slow and the network was even slower, so there was a, a positive advantage to extreme economy of, of, of typing. Now it's just laziness uh, and tradition. Um, and that does mean that there is a, a, an element of just learning involved. You, you, you learn this is the command you use to, um, uh, to, to do such and such a task, and these are, this is how you use it. Uh, there is help available, we'll get on to that. There's, there are, there are, there's a manual which you can use, and there's a limited amount of discoverability uh, when using the manual. But um, the affordances, if you like, of uh, the, 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 the command line interface are much thinner than on a, a GUI interface. And that's just, it's the price you pay for the, for the, for the flexibility. Okay, that was, that, that first section is rather, a slightly um, symbolic one, but I, we do want to be fairly sure that we're all on the same page as it were at this point. Um, uh, can I assume that everyone can see um, something like, this. If anyone can't, then you should be talking to a demonstrator by now. Um, I'll just glance at the, at the chat. Uh, all the different shells. Yep. Uh, basically, most folk use Bash. I have you know what, a lot of people have opinions about about shells. Um, it's like having opinions about about keyboards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to assume that we're on this same page by now. So let us go back to here and go on to the uh, one. So I have shown a, a command which shows the list of files in a directory. The next thing to do is to get some sort of uh, um, familiarity with the idea of where, where am I in the file system and how do I find out where I am, how do I move about, how do I look at files. Um, okay, let's, let's uh, keep, keep going. What you um, will always have to know is, is, is where am I. For that, you need to print the working directory, pwd. And you can see that in my case, I'm in um, a file called, a, a directory, a, a folder, if you like, called users Norman. Uh, I'm on a Mac, uh, and that's the, the, the usual uh, location for the starting point. When, when you first open up a shell, you will typically end up there. If you're on Linux, then it'll be something like slash home, slash your, your username. Uh, if you're on WSL, excuse me, and then it'll be something, uh, something similar. I can't remember exactly what. Um, and what happens here is I'm giving a command, type uh, command PWD, I'm getting an output on the, on the screen. Uh, no other garnish on the, uh, uh, on the output. It doesn't say your 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 directory is such and such. You just list the directory, um, and the the e economy of output is again part of traditional, but it's all, all also important for being able to chain um, c commands together. So so uh, output from commands uh, from shell commands is typically extremely laconic. It, it, there's very little chatter, and you just get used to that. So. What does a file, a file system look like? If we uh, look at the, 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 it all starts from a directory called uh, slash, the, the, the top level directory. And I can ask what's in that top level directory by typing ls slash. On a Mac, you see something uh, like that, which is a, a bunch of, of mostly directories in, the, in that case. And you can see that one of them is, uh, oops, go back to 
uh, I will frequently get um, uh, fail to uh, switch back and forth appropriately because I, I know what I'm seeing. Uh, so um, if I if I fail to do that, then someone just unmute themselves and shout. <coughs> so I do ls slash. I see a, a number of uh, um, files and directories, including one called users. I do ls um, um, uh, ls slash users. I see one called Norman. I do ls slash users Norman, and I see the directory that I am currently in. And if I just take ls by itself, then it shows the. Uh, it, it is equivalent to typing ls uh, users uh, Norman, because. Uh, Because uh, ls is written so that if it doesn't give, it, it, you, you give it a, the, the name of the, of the directory you want to see listed. But if you don't, then it just shows it just shows the um, d uh, the, the directory you're currently in. What directory you're currently in? The working directory, which you can you can print by typing print working directory. So the key thing here is that there is a uh, a tree of um, of, of, of directories which starts at the, at, at the directory called slash. And allows you to work, you work your way down to the directory you're actually interested in. Uh, the as you as you'll have seen when I was typing, uh, the, the various levels of directory are separated by by, by slashes. Uh, that's um, uh, universal on, on Unixes. Um, now, as it, so, LS has as a, has as its default uh, printing the the contents of the of the working directory. But some of these things that you can see here, sorry, are files, and some of them are directories. How can you tell which ones are which? What you can do is, is oops, um, to ls minus capital F. Now this is the first appearance of a, a of a, an option or a flag attached to a command, uh, which modifies its behaviour. So. As you can see, when I, when I add the, this option, capital F, uh, it modifies the behavior by putting a, a slash behind some of the, behind those of the objects in this directory that are themselves directories and uh, not doing so for those objects which are, are files. It's very useful um, to have um, to have that, give you, a, give you a, a clearer idea of, um, of where you are and, and, and what you could do next. And this is a very general syntax. Uh, so that all commands in, in Unix will have, almost all commands, in fact, I think there are none which don't, uh, have uh, one or more uh, options which modify the behavior. And they're all the same pattern, a minus sign, a dash, a hyphen, whatever you want to call it, um, with a, a, a typically a single letter behind it. And these it, are, are tended to be fairly mnemonic in the sense that, that, you, that you sort of remember how to use them. But there, And there are some conventions about what these options are, but basically there aren't. Uh, basically, the, the the case of of just re re remembering everything, um, things, the ones you use frequently, will become wired into your fingers. Uh, so so this, this, it's just a matter of, of familiarity. Um, your shell might also make this display uh, more colourful. Um, uh, if it does, that's nice. If it, I I, I myself prefer. The find those colors distracting, but uh, if, if your shell is, is showing you the same result in glorious Technicolor, then you might want to get used to it. And another command we will use occasionally is to clear the display, just make the t uh, terminal uh, go away. Um, and uh, um, uh, I start fresh. I can also go back and look at previous commands by typing the up arrow key. I do it again and press return. I go back uh, through the, the sequence of commands that I've, I, 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 I've given uh, and I can select uh, them as I, I want. That's, that's very labor saving um, in, t in terms of allowing you to, uh, especially if you write a complicated command, which, which works, then you might want to, 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 to up arrow back to it uh, when you want to reuse that command. It, there are other ways of reusing commands, but that's a very, a very useful one. Now, um, LS has lots of other options. Uh, I, I've shown one, the, the option capital F, but there are plenty of others. And so it's important to have an idea of 
um, how to get some information about uh, about those. Now, if you type ls minus help, if you're on Windows or, or Linux, this will give you uh, some brief uh, help. Uh, the ls on on on, on macOS is slightly different and, and, and doesn't, but I can give a command. Um, as it, what I've done here is, gi is give a deliberately um, un unrecognized uh, uh, option. There's an, uh, an option in this case called, called option question mark. And what it says is illegal option. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and gives a, a one line uh, reminder of what the, the usage of this command is. That's not terribly helpful. Uh, it, it, it's there to remind you if you've forgot, if you basically know but you've but you've forgotten. And what it's saying is, ls can be uh, can be optionally followed in square brackets uh, by one or other of these options, and it's optionally followed by um, by a file uh, or one or more files. This is just reminding us uh, what the the syntax of this uh, this command is, presuming we understand it. But presuming we don't, what do we do? We look at the manual. And the manual is built in. We look at a man ls, we see uh, uh, a display of the, the manual page for the ls command. And that's the, the, this is just the, the first screenful of it. But I can press the space bar to go down. I just press B to go back up. And if I want to search for, um, uh, say I want to, 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 to remind myself what the uh, option um, minus capital F does, I press slash minus capital F and return and it searches through the file for uh, for, for that particular string. And what it's saying is it displays a slash immediately after each path in the directory and, and, and so on. There's other types of files available and that tells you the details. The manual pages um, are authoritative. They, the, the, every 99% 99.9% .9 of all Unix commands will have a man page, uh, and that is the, is the canonical documentation about, about about the command. It tends to be rather um, terse. It's, it, it, it's not. It, it doesn't hold your hand, but it, it, it does uh, tell you uh, very um, compactly, but authoritatively, what you can do. You you, you page down it. Um, if you press uh, capital G, you will go to the bottom. I mention this because uh, there's a, a couple of of, of, of um, standard uh, um, parts of the manual page which are uh, tend to be at the bottom. Um, there are often examples. Uh, so here you can see um, a, a brief example, just one example of a very complicated man page which um, shows you how to use it. That is not so useful in the case of ls, but for other commands. That, that can be very useful just to remind yourself, you know, what am I supposed to be able to do with this? Um, other important things are uh, the see also uh, section near the bottom of the man page, which tells you other uh, commands that might be, um, that you might be interested in if you're looking at this man, uh, this man page. I'm not going to go through what those other commands are, but uh, the I will mention that you quite often see a command followed by a number in brackets. That's just the, the fairly common way of saying what this uh, th that this is a, ma a, a, a unit command. You quite often see use ls br ls brackets one um, in in on Stack Exchange or, or, or something. And that, that's just someone saying use the man page such and such. The number is the so-called section of the man of the, of the, of the manual uh, that, that, that those are in. Two flags, two mod, and sort next term are all in in section one of the of the man page of the. Of the, of, of, in, chap, in section one of the collection of man pages, they are user commands. The, the ones in section five, section seven, section eight are are uh, other chapters which you typically won't uh, have to have to worry about uh, just just now. So the the, the, the ones with, with, with brackets one are the ones that are expected that you will are likely to type at some point, and we'll, in fact we will be using sort uh, before too long. So. Um, that's oh, and, and and type Q, just just, just the letter Q uh, to come out. I think that's a good point to which to glance at the chat. Okay, I'm sure if people are having problems, they are uh, having problems in uh, the with the, with 
I don't see how problems with the demonstrators, but how problems in the in, in the uh, in the breakout rooms uh, able to by the demonstrators. So I'll, I'll I'll keep pressing on. Um, let's go back to here. Um, I mentioned that if you type an an, an invalid option, uh, most commands will say um, you know this you know, did, did give a very sum quick summary of the usage of command just to um, get you um, back on track. I mentioned the man pages. Um, I have uh, um, an important point here is that um, it, it, it should mention a couple of other um, important uh, LS options. I've done. I've, I've shown LS. I've shown LS minus capital F just to give a this little um, very quiet indication of what a, what a file is. I can ask for. Uh, I can take LS minus L to show, give the so-called long form listing which is a listing of the files which has um the file name the the date uh it was last uh changed uh, all these were changed um you know so, so, so some months ago we'll, we'll see other, 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 other things relevant is the size of the file and this um slightly unhelpfully is the size in bytes and these all happen to be quite small files. The directories, the the the, 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 the yep. We can't see what oh, your thank uh, you. Cuts the terminal. Yep, thank you very much. Um, uh, what you see is uh, see here is uh, I, I typed ls minus l, which shows the um, the same um, list of files as when I typed just basic ls. Show the file names. Uh, it shows the date they were last. Um, touched and the size of the file in in bytes it's not terribly useful because if it's a large file that's a very large number so we might also ask for give the h option to show the size of these things in human units in this case they're all bytes apart from this one which is uh, two kilobytes um, and that's all more useful uh, quite a lot quite a lot of the time um, these options can be ganged together, so I can type LH, and it's as if I typed uh, L and H. So we, the options can be squished together, again, to save uh, several characters worth of, of typing. Unix is a horror, a horror of making you actually type anything. Um, another uh, um, uh, option is to uh, list the files um, in the long form, um, time ordered. So here, uh, you can see I, this um, this file for here, for some reason, I don't, I don't know why I've, why that's been modified uh, today, very strange, um, doesn't matter. This is the most uh, recent, these files are listed in, in time order, most recent to oldest. Uh, I can also reverse that and give the in the long form, time ordered, but reversed, to give them uh, ordered most, or oldest uh, to most recent. So if, for example, you thought it has something changed the directory, uh, you, you, it, it's very natural to type uh, uh, LSLTR, which is the same as giving those three options separately, and give and and, and thus look at the uh, the files in increasing order order of time with the most recent at the bottom say, oh, that's the file I changed recently. That's why this, um, that, that, that's a uh, that is useful. Um, don't worry about the, the, the other things in this line. That's the, who owns this file, me obviously. Um, and, that, and, and, and directory permissions are less uh, important on your own laptop than they would be on a, on a shared machine. So, um, the things the the, the 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 output here is all the same. But the things you are likely to be interested in are the size of the file, the date, and uh, the, um, the, 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 the 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 name. Right. Um, so I've shown the. Uh, this is my ho uh, home directory. I can also uh, ask what's on my desktop. Um, I can ask what, I'm not sure what those are, uh, I can give the, the F option which shows what type of thing they are, desktop, and that shows that in that file there's a, um, 
a file with some stuff in it. Something which is a directory, you can see by the trading slash, another directory, and uh, a JPEG, which I slightly anomalously is, um, is listed as being executable for reasons which we won't uh, worry about just now. So I mentioned that I'm in the, the, the this working directory. Um, this is where I, uh, all, all commands are, are relevant to. I don't want to be uh, there. We're going to move uh, directory. What, how do we do that? We change directory, command being CD, to desktop. I do LS. Now the new default for what LS um, shows is the new current directory is this uh, desktop. Now if I type PWD, I'm, I, I see I'm, I'm in that, that directory. I've previously unpacked this uh, zip file that was downloaded in the in the, in the very first the sort of zero step of this. I can CD to um, shell lesson data. PWD, I am there in fact. LS, these are the files that uh, are being uh, useful in this um, the, the, the lesson. LS minus F uh, shows that uh, three, the four of these, five of these are directories and that the others are and just just files. So I hope you're seeing the same thing. If anyone isn't, uh, I hope we can uh, um, uh, get help fairly urgently. Um, now, I am here. Uh, I am I have, I have these files. What happens if I, if I change to somewhere else? Bash just says you can't do that. Uh, there's no such file directory, so you you, you can't um, you can't head off into outer darkness by you, you, if you, if you change directories someplace new, it doesn't just just mean like create the directory for you or anything, anything occult like that. So I'm in this directory here, uh, shell lesson data. Perhaps I want to go back to to to, to desk the, the the desktop directory. I could do see users Norman. De, 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 De desktop, you could do that, it would work. But a more economic way of doing that is I, what is, is to up. I, I, I'm a sense in, in the user directory down to the norm directory, down to the desktop directory, down to the share lesson data. I want to go up a level. Uh, if you think back to that, that tree that was shown in the um, 10 minutes ago uh, of, of, of the tree of, of, of directories in the file system. Uh, a natural thing to do is want to go to up one. And you do that with a special directory name called dot dot. So if I change to the directory dot dot and ask PWD, I find I'm in the, the parent directory. Uh, so that, 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 that directory dot dot is always available. It always means the directory above where, where I am now. There's a companion to it called dot. If I change the directory dot, I don't move at all. Why would that? Why would that ever be useful? Sometimes you do specifically want to refer to where I am now, and that, uh, it, um, in that case, uh, the directory dot is uh, how you refer to, uh, to to that. Wherever you are, dot refers to here. So let's go back to shell. Uh, at this point, because I'm I, I'm not going to be able to stop myself doing it, I'll note that if it's obvious how to rather than type out the whole command, I can type I can go this far and press the tab key. And because there's only one directory called shell dash something, uh, the shell is able to fill in the rest and I can uh, go there, ls. Uh, tab is wonderful. If you're not sure what to type, press tab and it, it, it should fill out mostly the, the rest of a command um, or, or typical of a file name. Um, that means it's, it's, it's not, it's not um, costly to have quite descriptive file names. You can you can have a, a long file name and not anticipate having to type the whole thing out all the, all the time. It, you type out enough that makes it, it a unique. Press tab and the shell will complete it. So, um, those directories, um, the dot and dot dot, uh, are, are in a sense visible in each of, of the uh, directories in the file system. Can I see those? Yes, I can. <coughs> I can use another ls option called option A, which shows all the entries in directory. Because uh, there are there are more files there, a few more files there than are necessarily visible. Uh, ls will not display a file whose name starts with a dot. Um, that means that such files are can be present in the directory but hidden. 
As you can see here, there's a file called dot bash underscore profile, which is slightly anomalously there, but, but I think it's only there to, to illustrate the fact that um, ls didn't, without the, that option A, didn't show it. Add option A and you, and you see that. And also you see these two directories, uh, and they are directories because I can type with an F, these two directories dot and dot dot dot, remember it's here, dot dot is the directory uh, one up. I'll do a quick glance at the chat. Um, yep, nothing there. Okay, um, I think we're making good progress. Um, we've seen, if we go back to uh, the, the the notes, we've seen, uh, I think I've said all these things. Um, ba -ba -bum. Yes, I've covered all these things. Uh, another sh thing that's useful is, um, go back to here. Um, there is another shortcut which is oops, cd tilde uh, t uh, on my keyboard that's just uh, the shift uh, key to the left of the z but it'll be in different places in different keyboards um, tilde will take you back to your home directory so whatever you are cd to tilde will take you back to the home directory and tilde is, is, is a, a shortcut for your home directory to whatever it is um, so that, for example, I can do ls tilde slash desktop, and that is the the name that that, that, that refers to the desktop directory, um, from from anywhere, it, um, it, not not just from the current directory. Um, so uh, there are a couple of of exercises. To try at that point. I'm not going to. Anyway, I think I, I I will briefly mention this. So, say you, you were, your current working directory was slash user slash Amanda slash data. Which of the following commands could Amanda use to navigate to her home directory, which is users Amanda? Uh, and I want you to have a, it's been a, you know, a couple of moments thinking of those ones listed there, which ones would be, would, would, would work? Uh, let's, let's have, you know, 20 seconds looking through those and thinking th thinking them through while you're doing that I'll, I'll, I'll mention that I am um, uh, I happen to use Z shell because it's now the default on my on, on Mac OS. Um, I it's I because I tend to use lots of different computers. I tend to aim not to have opinions about shells because that, 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 if I did, then the computer I was on would always have the wrong one. So I tend to use Bash almost all the time. Um, people, as you have strong opinions about shells, um, try not to use T uh, C shell because it's. Uh, <laughs> Let's go back to um, this uh, little exercise. Starting from user Amanda data, which of the following would be usable to get to uh, users Amanda? CD dot wouldn't. Remember, dot is the current directory, which <coughs> we suppose is the directory users Amanda data. So CD dot would change to the current directory, which would, wouldn't be moving at all. CD slash wouldn't work. That would change to the, the root directory, the very top of the file system, which is not. Uh, which, which, uh, the, there's really nothing there you can, that um, uh, you, you, you're encouraged to fiddle with. It's not a useful place to be, but it would, it, would, it would go there, which is not where you want to be. CD slash home slash Amanda. Um, that it would be the right answer if you were on a, a non Mac OS uh, uh, Unix, because the typical there uh, slash home is where uh, people's home directories are, but it wouldn't be right in this case where by by a position uh, the home directory they want to get to is slash user slash Amanda. I perceive dot dot slash dot dot. Well, that's, get, that's, that's getting close, it's going up, and it's then going up another one. So that's uh, going to the, the, the dot dot directory here, which is a name for the parent, and it's going to the dot dot directory in that directory, which is a name for its parent. So that would end up back in slash users. Again, not what we were aiming for. TD tilde, that's, that's right. Whatever whatever Amanda, Amanda is in the, in the file system, CD tilde teleports straight to the home directory, whatever it's called. So that would work. 
CD Home wouldn't work. Uh, Partly for the same reason as, 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 as in number three, because uh, it's uh, on this variant of Unix, um, uh, the home directories are not under this directory slash home. But also because if Amanda is in directory slash user slash Amanda, cd home refers to the directory home, which is in this current directory. Which is not, which, I mean, there might be a directory called that here, in, in, in which case you go further down the file system, but that's not what you're aiming for. How about cd tilde slash data slash dot dot. That looks wrong, but it's actually right. Because tilde refers to the home directory. Tilde slash data refers to the directory data within that home directory, which is actually where we are now. Remember, it says slash user slash manager data. And dot dot refers to the directory above that. So that goes to the home directory, then down one, then up one. So it's actually equivalent to option five, cd tilde. CD by itself, that looks wrong again, but would actually work. Because if you type CD with no argument, um, I, mentioned, I mentioned that LS has defaults. Uh, if you don't give an, give an argument to LS and a directory to show, it presumes you mean the current directory. CD presumes you mean home. If you just type CD, you'll teleport straight home. Um, so that's actually equivalent to option five. And number nine, cd dot dot, um, goes to the directory which is one above this one. Since we are in directory user slash amanda slash data, directory one above is user amanda, which is where we aim to get to. So the point of, of, of this exercise is not uh, to get you to um, you know, sort of, sort of memorize these. It's to illustrate the various ways that uh, directories are referred to from different places. And, and and all of these options are things that you will eventually be, they will eventually come, come, come naturally to you, um, in terms of of um, using these this tilde the, the dot the dot dot to move around the file system, jump here and there, and refer to 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 uh, directories from one place uh, in a very natural way. So, I, I, I this is a good exercise, which is why I spent a little time on it. Um, do be, be sure you understand why each of those things that are right and wrong are right or wrong, because uh, if you're at all uncertain, um, uh, you'll be feeling uncomfortable. The, we're spending quite a, lot, quite a lot of time on, the, on on this first session. I think I'm probably falling behind behind schedule, but uh, I, I'm doing so just because I do want... Uh, it, it's quite important that everyone feels comfortable knowing where they are and how to move around in the file system. And uh, if this isn't, you're not comfortable with it yet, then introduce into be so uh, soon um, there's another exercise uh, there and look couple of exercises these are all good things to look at I encourage you to um, after um, after this morning to look through these these exercises and solutions and make sure you understand why the solutions are are, are what they are a last recap um, in general <coughs> uh, our command looks like a bit of command, zero or more options or prefix by a, a, a single minus sign and an argument uh, to, to, to the command. And and I'll use these terms uh, frequently from now on. The command, the option or options, and the argument or arguments. Option, the options don't have to be there. The arguments don't have to be there. You can have more than one option. You can have more than one argument. The options always come before the argument. That's not 100% true, but it's true often enough that you might as well learn it as a rule with exceptions. Um, sometimes you will also see uh, options which have two minus signs. Um, can we have an example of that? Um, and ls paging through this. Uh, this version of of, of ls um, on, on macOS doesn't uh, doesn't have those. But if you do man ls on a, a Linux um, or, or Windows, Norman, you yep. aren't in the command shell. Yep. Yep, they will. So um, this version of of LS doesn't have uh, only has short options. Um, uh, can I think of a of a command which has some long options? Um, uh, uh, no, I can't. Um, so, so sometimes you'll also see um, uh, uh, that there are commands which have uh, long options, uh, which are a full word with. Um, 
two minus signs uh, ahead of them. These are these almost always have an equivalent short option that was a single minus sign or a single character. Um, the difference is really only that the longer options are more mnemonic and are thus better used in, in, in scripts. In scripts. Um, this is more line to type. Okay, back here. Um, I think this is more examples at the end of this um, the, 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 this chapter, um, but we are about to see um, uh, but we're about to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the next thing that the, 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 um, the script there mentions is using the tab key, which I've already uh, talked about. Talked of. So, key points. The file system is where all your, all your data is stored. Information and files, and which are stored, are organised in, in directories, which can, you know, directory contains other directories. You change directories with the command cd, which uh, you either give a, a, a path, which can be a relative path, meaning a path uh, at a directory relative to where you are now, or an absolute path, so-called, which is one which starts with, the, with, with a slash and, 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 and gives a, a name for the directory starting from the very top of the file system, or you can miss it the path completely and be taken back to your home directory. LS shows the contents of directories, either where you are, um, uh, the working directory, if you don't give an argument, or the contents of a, a named directory. And you can tell where you are by the printing the working directory, command PWD. Um, we've seen options, we've seen relative paths. Um, I think, don't think I mentioned this thing between relative and absolute paths. I think it was implicitly there, uh, but uh, to fix the terminology, a relative path is one which which uh, doesn't start with a slash, but is relative to where you are now. So if a relative path um, for directory X is the directory X in your working directory. A so-called absolute path starts with a slash and is relative to the, the very root of the file system. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, have a quick glance at the Okay, I think I'm actually not too badly behind schedule, um, which is good. I'm a little bit behind schedule. I, I, I think I um, we, got, we had a couple of um, minutes of prefatory remarks at the beginning. So I think I'm actually not behind schedule, <laughs> bizarrely enough. But um, uh, we're not going to slow down. Are there any questions? No. Are we happy? Is everyone happy? Uh, are, are, are people getting uh, are, are, are the um, breakout rooms be used as amphitheaters? Um, keep going. Excellent. I see. I, I see at least two thumbs up, and two thumbs up is good. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll take that. Okay, let's press on. Um, um, so. We are we'll being encouraged to go back to our find the right um, application. We've been encouraged to go back to our shell lesson data directory. Uh, we we'll do that by doing um, where are we? Um, where can we go? Ah, I remember I put it in uh, desktop. The uh, DES tab, um, I press tab tab. Oh, there we are. There, there's the file shell tab. I go to that directory, and I see the files that I expect to see there. I can do much ls minus capital F to remind myself what those uh, things are. Now, this is. The scenario we we're talking about here is where this is someone's uh, thesis work. So the an important step is uh, starting on the thesis, which you're you're encouraged to think of do do as, as soon as possible. Just get get the thing get the thing going. So we want to do that by putting it into a, a directory of its own, so to keep all the, the thesis files together. Um, how do we make a new directory with um, with the command mcdir? And as you can see, this being Unix, uh, the idea of including all the vowels is just uh, anathema. So we make the directory by giving the command mcdir and the directory thesis. This being Unix, it doesn't chatter away about what's, what's happened. It just comes back 
um, the fact that there wasn't an error message is the confirmation of success. Uh, Unix, uh, Unix shell commands um, uh, say nothing if they succeeded, typically. I do ls and I see a, a directory, a directory uh, thesis. So that's good. Um, now we can actually make several uh, layers of directories at, at a time if uh, if need be. I can type mcdir. If I just type uh, project data and project results and give that command, I get an error message. Mcdir project not at file directory. Well, I, I know there's not a file directory. I wanted to create it. Mugger won't create intermediate directories. It, um, it, if the file, if the directory project existed, then it would create the data directory and the results directory inside it, but it won't create parents. What we can do instead is, well, I'm not going to take that all, that all, all, all out I'm going to do, do up arrow and left arrow to go back to the beginning of the command and include the minus P option. What the P option says is make parents as well. Again, no response, it just, uh, it, it worked, so it didn't give an error, and now I, I can do ls minus f, I see a directory um, project, uh, ls project, I see two directories, uh, data and results. Um, this is starting to get a little bit confusing. So uh, what I can also do is, uh, is type ls, um, let's uh, have these little annotations, and include a capital R, meaning uh, do, show the, the directory recursively. So I can do ls minus f capital R project, and it shows uh, the directories, the, the, the contents, directory contents, the contents of the directory project, and recursively the, directories, the contents of, of, of those directories and, and underneath which can be useful if you uh, are not sure where uh, th th things are. Um, now, looking at this, you'll see that the we're going to have some st stuff in, in this directory called North Pacific Gaia. And you can see it's been named North-Pacific-Gaia. And this is a good point to mention that Unix is um, allows any character in a file name apart from slash. The only character you can't have in a file name is slash. So you can have all sorts of strange characters in a file name. Don't. Uh, do, this is a, a freedom you typically do not want to take. You can have spaces in file names, you can have tilters in file names, you can have dollar signs in file names, you can have all sorts of things in file names. But doing so is asking for trouble because uh, quite a lot of those characters will also mean something when you're typing uh, commands in the shell and so you can end up uh, just causing confusion for yourself. Uh, so typically uh, file, files and directories in, in Unix land are named without spaces, uh, hyphens are used to join words and dots can be used to, to break the file name up. So you see that, that here there are there's a file called notes.txt, numbers.txt, solo.pdf, pizza.cfg. Uh, that so-called file extension is, is just a convention. There, there's nothing, uh, there isn't structure in the file name that, 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 that distinguishes it from um, the, the bit before the dot and the bit after the dot. I can have a, have a file called my favorite file txt. That, that's a perfectly legitimate uh, file name. It just, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't have multiple extensions, it just has, has, has dots in it. It is conventional. Um, to call um, text files .txt, uh, the a PDF file, uh, which is dot, dot, dot .pdf is purely a convention. So stick with uh, letters, numbers, dots, dashes, and underscores. Um, so let's go into the thesis and let's embark on the the. Great process. So I've, I've dropped into the, into the directory called thesis. My fingers, without me telling them to, automatically type, type ls as soon as I change into that directory. Just because I change directory, what's here? Um, and there's nothing. Yeah. ls, there are no directories here, so ls just showed nothing. We're going to start on the thesis 
by giving the command nano draft.txt. Nano, uh, I press return, and the, t the screen changes. Now, nano is an editor. It allows us to edit files. It allows us to create files. It, it's a text editor. It allows us to create only text files. Um, we can't create Word files. We can't create um, PDF files this way. We just create text files. We can create .tex text files this way because they are just text files. But all we can do is, is type text and save it. I'm going to use nano all the way through this because nano is available on all of the all of the operating systems that we're, we're talking about here. Don't sit, don't carry on using nano. It's a terrible editor. Its only advantage is it's really simple and it's available everywhere. Um, there are all sorts of arguments you have of which is the best editor. Um, uh, th there are traditional Unix editors which are good. There are some GUI editors which can produce text files which are very good. Um, talk to your office mates about what the best editor to use is. Uh, if they're worth the salt, they'll, they'll say there's only one answer and everyone else is wrong and wicked. Um, and you can have a nice big argument about it. But there'll be, there'll be an editor which suits you. Word is not an editor from this point of view. It, it, it Word edits it, it edits Word files and nothing else. What you need is a text editor. So that, that, that file which, which, which likes to type characters of text and, and doesn't change them, doesn't format them, doesn't do anything like that. So what, what, what we type into, the, into a file, this draft.txt, is what appears in the file and nothing else. There's no formatting. That homily aside, um, we can start just typing. And, and I'll, I'll use the example that they have in, in, in the notes. It's not plish or um, perish anymore. Um, where is it? Um, return its share and a very righteous um, uh, exhortation. Now we want to save this file. Uh, there's a um, number of little prompts along, along the bottom um, which remind us how to do this in nano. Uh, we we'll want to exit while saving. Now that uh, caret X in the bottom, bottom left there means hold down the control key, which is somewhere on your keyboard, hold the control key, press X. We're asked, do you want to take the modified buffer? Uh, we take a Y to say yes. File to write to, draft.txt, press return, and we're back out at the command prompt. Type ls, and we have a file, draft.txt. Uh, you will see the control key you refer to in a variety of different ways. Control X, Control plus X, CTRL X, you know, carrot X, C dash X. All these mean the same thing. They mean hold on the control key and, and uh, the, the, put one of the keys on the left hand side of your keyboard, like the shift key and so on. And press the, 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 the associated thing. If anyone has any problems with that, um, do shout out and a demonstrator will zoom to your assistance. <coughs> um, yes, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah, I, I see some, some useful chat in the, uh, in the, in the Zoom chat. Any questions there, do shout, because it's quite important we're all on the same page when it comes to that. Okay, um, so we did ls. I, I pretty automatically when I came out of, of, of nano typed ls, um, uh, and, and saw this file draft.txt uh, there. Um, another way we can create files is just to touch them. Touch, whoop, touch um, my file.txt. You're not showing the shell again. Thank you. Yep. I can just type touch my file.txt. Um, ls, I see I have two files uh, in this directory. I ju just with touching this file, it, it, the file uh, appeared. ls minus l, aha. This draft.txt is 64 bytes long, but this myfile.txt is zero bytes long. It's an empty file. Um, this sounds like a largely useless thing. Um, we might come later on to see some reasons why you might want to have a, 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 an empty file in this way. The notes at this point uh, go on to say um, make a few remarks about, about file names and the like. 
um, which I won't reiterate because I, I did uh, mention um, them already. Um, let's see. Where are we? Okay, um, let's go up one. Whoops. Ooh, let's go up one. Um, uh, look at the files in the in thesis uh, directory. Um, perhaps we've decided this 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 um, file draft.txt. <coughs> perhaps that's not a very good name. Perhaps we want to have instead to have a file of, of uplifting quotes. So we will. What do we name this file? Now, you would think there would be a command called rename. There is, but it's not called. Well, there's a command which does that, but it's not called rename. It's called move. And it's not spelled M-O-V-E, of course. It's just spelled M-V. We want to move the, th the file called um, dirt tab. We want to, get, to move that to a different name. Let's move it to thesis quotes.txt. Again, uh, the shell doesn't uh, prattle about what, what, what happened. If we now do ls thesis, we see that the contents of that, of, of that directory are this file, um, uh, myfile.txt, and this file, quotes.txt. They're both the same size. The, 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 the file, quotes.txt, is the same file as it was, as the draft file, draft.txt, was. It's just got, got, got a different name. Um, if I um, say I had a, a, a file called... Uh, um, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, uh, nano um, thesis my file dot txt. Um, hello, control x, yes, blah. Uh, thesis. Um, say I had a, 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 a file in this directory called my uh, called test file.txt. This is also uh, a zero length file. See, I, I, I moved that uh, test file.txt to thesis um, my file.txt. So, as you will remember, there already is a, fi a file called thesis my file.txt. I'm renaming test file.txt to be thesis my file.txt. So, what do you think would happen? Unix says, fine. myfile.txt is now uh, what testfile.txt was. I have silently destroyed that file thesis.myfile.txt. Um, the way that um, uh, Unix enthusiasts uh, um, um, phrase this is, who knows best? If you asked the, the shell to move Test file.txt to thesis my, slash my file.txt, then I presume that's what you wanted to do. And the fact that, and, and, and Unix doesn't have opinions about the fact that you just destroyed a file. It'll do what it's told silently and um, without objecting. Um, so it's important. You, to, you can accidentally <laughs> delete quite a lot of stuff uh, in Unix. We'll see a couple of things, ways of, of avoiding that. And the most powerful way of avoiding that is to use version control. Uh, for all your important files, which we'll come on to in the the session a, a after next, but that it, it, a, a, amongst its many virtues, one of them is being able to safe uh, ensure yourself against silliness caused by d d d the fact that you can you can accidentally delete quite a lot of stuff um, without meaning to. So um, that's a back where we were before with this zero length file my file txt in place. Say we want to move, um, we'd say that, that that file quotes isn't in the right place. We want to move it into the current directory. Let's move it. We're, we've seen that move can rename a, a file within a directory. Um, but what if we want to move it somewhere else? What do we want to move it to the current directory? Well, this is one of those cases where we're referring to the current directory is important. I mentioned that dot is the name for the current directory. Whatever you are, dot is the name for here. So here I'm moving uh, the file thesis.quote to the directory dot. That works. I can, we can now see that quotes is 
present. And there are two different things that have happened here. When we did this, we saw that we are moving a file from one place to another file. Here, we're moving a file from one place to a directory. So the command move has two different forms, really. They, 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 they look similar, but there's two different forms, one of which is where the, um, the, the destination uh, is a file, as in this case, or the, if we're a, a directory. If we look at the man page for, for move, we see that the this synopsis, there are two synopses. One is where uh, you can move with one of these options, a source file into a target, and that target can be a file name or a directory. Another case is where you can uh, move a source file plural, so source and multiple other source files into a directory. So, so what this is saying is there's two ways of using move, uh, one of which is where there are, there are more than two uh, arguments. In that case, only the last one must be a, a, a directory. Um, and uh, this is quite a short man page because there are uh, very, very few options to the move command. Excuse me. So... Um, NLS thesis, we can see that the, the quotes file isn't there. And if we do ls thesis quotes.txt, we get you know, ls objects that, that, that there's no such file directory. Um, now, what do you got? I'm, I'm looking back at the script. Okay, there's a, an ex, in the script, there's an exercise there which I encourage you to look at um, when you have time later. Um, I've shown you how to use move. It, 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 it takes the same file but puts it somewhere else, either by renaming it in a particular directory or by moving it to a different directory. And the, the, under the covers, these are actually both the same thing, but uh, the, the, you, you think of them as two different operations. But there's only one file there. There's one file before, one file afterwards. What if you want to save a copy of a file? Perhaps because you're about to, to edit one file and you want to save a backup copy. That's not the best thing to do in, in, in general. In general, you want to do that um, using the joys of version control. But say that's um, for one reason or another, you want to copy a file. The command is not copy, of course. It's copy, copy quotes tab.txt. I want to copy that to th thesis quotations txt again and it doesn't say anything but it said it would do ls quotes.txt thesis quotations tab and we can see both those files listed uh, ls minus l the current directory we can see that this quotes file is um 64 bytes long oops is uh 64 bytes long and was Modified it eleven eleven, ls, oops, ls minus l uh, thesis. We can see that this quotations file is also sixty four bytes long, but was modified more recently. In other words, that's a, that's the new file. So this um, eleven eleven quotes txt created ten minutes ago is um, dated then, the new file is a completely different file, a different copy of that file. Um, and we can also do things like copy recursively, thesis to thesis backup. There we see we have um, a directory, a directory thesis, a directory thesis backup. Minus L R to show in the content recursively. We see two files in there. Uh, thesis added a arrow there. Thesis minus tab. Thesis backup. <coughs> and we notice that these two files are both uh, timed at eleven twenty-two. So these are new copies, completely fresh copies of uh, of the files in 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 thesis. So if we start messing with, 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 with these ones here or deleting them or you know, otherwise going mad, um, then we won't 
affect these copies here. I'll say it yet again, this is not a good way of, of doing a backup of your thesis. Version control is the thing which you can look forward to uh, in a fortnight. Okay, now um, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, let's go back to here. Um, this is quite a good, a, a good little recap. Uh, say you create a file and you you mis you misnamed it statistics. Uh, dot txt. How, how, how do you re re rename that? If you just copy, you'd end up with a, a, a new file with the correct name, but the old file still there. If you did move mv, you'd end up you, you're just you're just renaming the file. If you move that file to dot, uh, you're moving it to here. Nothing happens. Um, if you copy it to here, um, uh, I think. To, you could end up destroying the file. Um, don't do that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I think I'll skip that. Um, where are we? Okay, so what we have now is uh, in, uh, in thesis and thesis backup uh, directories, we have um, this the, 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 this uh, zero length file myfile.txt and this file of quotations quotations.txt. The quotation.txt was a copy of this file quotes.txt here. <coughs> so we don't want that quotes.txt file anymore. So we'll um, delete it. We'll remove it. rm quotes.txt and it's gone. It doesn't say, are you sure? It doesn't move it to the bin. It just deletes it. That's also Unix um, the, uh, saying, um, well, you know what you're doing, don't you? If you tell it to delete a file, it'll delete it. Um, I, won't, I won't mention version control again. Um, uh, in this case, it's just a, a small file, but it's possible to it's accidentally delete quite, lo quite large um, amounts of things, and Unix won't tell you not to. Um, if we now do ls quotes uh, dot txt, the file doesn't exist. Um, now, see, let, let's get that back again. So, copy uh, thesis uh, quotations to quotes dot txt. So, uh, what I have here is um, the original file quotations is still there, but um, quotes dot txt is in this directory. Um, again, as, as a copy. Um, if you're not sure, then you, could, you can also give the, R, the, the, the command rm has a flag uh, minus i, quotes to txt. If you delete it, it'll ask, ah, are you sure? Type yes, and it deletes it. So uh, that seems um, uh, Useful. It doesn't seem terribly useful in that particular case. If, uh, as you will see how to do it in, in, in a moment, you're deleting large numbers of files, it can be, it can be quite useful to um, use the minus i option uh, to ask, to inquire. The American spelling, but inquire. That's why it's called option i. Um, to, to, to check each one. Um, it's. I think it's good not to rely on that because. Uh, if I used to make a mistake, there are other ways of of, of, of deleting um, numbers of files in a slightly safer way. Now, say we want to, we've got this uh, directory th thesis backup. Say we want to um, remove that thesis backup. Um, then it won't do that. It'll ref th this it will refuse to do. Um, it'll uh, uh, refuse to uh, delete a direct. RM will not delete a directory. Um, there's a special command called rmdir, thesis backup, but that won't work either because this is a rare occasion of, 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 of Unix knowing better. It won't remove a directory which isn't empty. Um, so what we can do instead is rm 
minus r thesis backup. That removes recursively the directory thesis backup and its contents. Again, it's, uh, it, it doesn't give any indication it's worked, but we do see the, um, the, the directory thesis backup has disappeared. And um, it has gone. There's no way to, 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 to get it back. It isn't in the bin. Th th this is a case where um, let's copy recursively thesis uh, to the thesis backup again. Uh, if we do rm minus r option i thesis backup here it would um, ask us do you want to look at the, uh, the files in directory? Yes. Do you want to move, move that file? Yes. Do you want to move that file? Let's say no. Um, uh, no. So now uh, we have the file thesis backup which has the, the, the file that we did say not to remove uh, inside it. Uh, um, RMISR is, is, is useful if you want to blow away a particular directory. Um, the RMISR minus I, I rarely use because um, that, one way or another, that tends not to be useful as often as, as you might think. Um, let's get rid of that RMISR thesis backup. Um, another uh, point here is if we do make the backup um, uh, it's the CD data okay uh, say we want to save a, a backup copy of a couple of these, couple of these files because what just just in case something happens we can make the make the backup and copy um, a meal tab uh, animals txt into uh, directory backup this is what's happening here is we're not the the, the, the last um, file mentioned in this command line uh, is not a file but, but a directory and what uh, copy does is if you are what we've seen before is copy uh, copying one file to another file name. What's seen here is copy uh, copying one or more files into a directory. What happens now is we do ls we see the the, the files amino acids.txt and animals.txt is still here, but ls backup the files are, are copied in there. And if we look at man cp, we see that again there are two. Uh, two synopses, two possible ways of using this. Uh, you copy off a source file to a ta one source file to one target file, or multiple source files to one target directory. That's what that uh, synopsis at the top of the CP man page is is reminding you. Uh, you can do. There's two ways of you of, of using it. Okay. Um, right. Let us. Um, Give us that um, that directory there. Let's now go into go up one and into the directory molecules. What the script is suggesting. Here we have a number of files which, which, which are all um, summing dot pdb. Uh, so they're they're, they're pretty much linked. They're, they're, we're supposing that these are some types of data files. Now, if once no, well, there's only what is it six files uh, there. And so it would be tedious uh, to uh, list, to just type those, those file names out. Be but because quite often what we want to do is do the same thing to lots of these files at once. And we would, the way we do that is by using wildcards, so called. So um, what I can do is I can type cube, cube, cubane uh, pdb, ethane.pdb, and so on. and um, uh, cube tab, e th e th tab, and see the, the, the uh, and see the contents, the, 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 and see those information about those files, or I can type star dot pdb, um, minus l, and see the ls minus l running on all of those fi the, 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 those files because the star dot pdb refers to all the files which match something.pdb. 
I can uh, that that file name that that wildcard doesn't have to be in the, in, in, in the same place. I can do ls p star dot pdb and list uh, those files which are p something dot pdb. So that wildcard uh, is quite flexible. It allows you to um, fill in the blanks in a large number of different ways. And this is one reason why systematic naming of files, especially data files, is is extremely useful because. If your files names are files are named sensibly, then you can do bulk operations with wildcards in uh, a way that's likely to be useful. Um, there's also a wildcard you know, question mark, which I'm not going to mention because it's, it's used much less commonly. And if you if you think of of the of the star as being the wildcard, then you can um, uh, do the, the large, vast majority of what, of what 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 you want to do. Um, I'll quickly, because I think that's quite a useful example, um, a listing following with a pattern. When you run in, in, in this molecules directory, which ls command will produce the output ethane.pdb, methane.pdb? Is it the first, second, third or fourth? I'll give you a, a couple of minutes to think over which of those it would be. A couple of minutes, about 10 seconds. <clears throat> I haven't mentioned the the question the question mark. Um, all the question mark does is it matches a, 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 a single uh, character. Um, in fact, the this actually isn't a good example because I skipped over what question mark means. But um, uh, the first and third would work. The first would work because the uh, that that first wildcard means something a T something ane dot pdb and of course that is a, is a pattern that matches both ethane and methane um, the second one wouldn't work because the question mark matches only a single character the third one would work because there's, there's two characters being, being matched there and the third one doesn't work because uh, that only matches file names which are ethane dot something that does match ethane.pdb, but it doesn't match methane.pdb because although, although methane.pdb has ethane.pdb inside it, there's no wildcard at the beginning of that file name there. Um, there's quite a good exercise uh, there, which I encourage you to, to go through when you have a moment. I'm, uh, I'm, nearly, I'm going to have a have a, a, a ten minute break at the end of this uh, this chapter, so uh, we'll be able to catch our breaths at, at breaths. Catch your breath at that point. Uh, there's quite a good, a good example here, which I encourage you to, to look at, look at uh, afterwards, which just helps to consolidate your understanding of what the, what the wildcard is doing and how to move around things. Um, and the the exercise following that is also useful, but it uh, encourages you to, uh, also a good consolidating exercise uh, to help you move things around. Um, in a, in a file system and, and organize things in a, uh, a directory tree in a way that is uh, useful to you later. Um, uh, yes, this also allows me to, to, to make the remark that this um, uh, person has very sensibly named uh, the the directory 2016.05.20. That's a year, month, date. Uh, Fast um, name, as opposed to the other way around. The big advantage of this: four letter, four letter year, a two letter month, and a two letter um, uh, day, of, day, day of the month, is that if you order the a list of files or directories alphabetically, then they end up being in date order if you've labelled the the names uh, that year. So it's very useful uh, uh, to, or, to to name dates always this way. Um, uh, just a, a top tip. So, blah blah blah. Um, do go through that solution, uh, that, that that exercise later, because it, it, it is useful uh, in, in in helping you firm up uh, what you what you understand about about this. Uh, the key points here are copy copies files from an old file to, to, to a new file, where the new can be either a new name for the file or a directory you want to move it into. Make sure. The same is true of, of, of move. The new thing can be either a, sing, a single file or a directory you want to move things into. Make dir creates files, create, create directories, rm dir removes directories, rm removes a single file. 
Um, and of course, with wildcards, you see that you can, um, because you can name a large number of things all at once, you can see rmstar.txt, rmstar.pdb, and delete possibly hundreds of files all at once. This can cause you to tear your hair out the first time you 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 you, 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 you uh, get it wrong and accidentally delete the wrong things. And this is one of the, one of the cases where rm minus i, the, the the that's the the checking mode of of rm can be useful. If you're not completely sure what you're about to, to, to remove, then uh, you can uh, check that you're not about to do, do, do something uh, disastrous uh, with the minus i. The star wildcard matches zero more characters in a file name, uh, so star.txt would, ma would match something.txt or would match the file.txt by itself. So, so the, the wildcard will, will match, uh, it will all keep matching nothing. Um, this point just needs re restating one more time. Uh, when you leave something in the shell, it's gone. Um, you, depending on the type of work you do, I think almost certainly you will need a more powerful text editor than Dano. Uh, we are using it only because it, it, uh, it's um, uh, it, it's ubiquitous. Um, you will invest. You will spend, spend a lot of quality time with the text editor you have. So uh, try a couple uh, until you find one that does work uh, for you, and ask your your colleagues' advice on them. Okay, I'll bring the next uh, chapter up. Uh, and but I will nonetheless uh, pause there now. Eleven forty. Um, I need to catch my breath. Um, let's have a ten minute break, just to walk around and flex our shoulders, and we'll get back uh, to the to, to, to this. I think that we're now one hour and forty minutes in, and actually we're on schedule. <laughs> we're on schedule. Amazingly, we're not going to be. We're not going to do the whole four and a half hours in three hours. But we're on schedule to get to uh, the three hour mark, roughly at about three hours. So we're, do we're doing well here. Uh, I hope you're not feeling too shell shocked. Uh, boom, kaboom. Um, but I'm too, sh too shocked by where we got to. But we will um, reconvene at uh, 11.50 and have a, um, uh, a walkabout between now and then. I'll, uh, meanwhile, I'll glance at, 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 at the, the comments in the chat. Back again in nine minutes.
we have one. Um, 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 let us uh, recommence. What we've done so far, uh, looking at files and directories and so on, uh, is the command line way of doing things that you can also do quite naturally, and possibly in some cases quite rather more easily, in, in a GUI. If I wanted to uh, rearrange uh, a, a, a bunch of files with a complicated directory tree, I myself would probably do it in the GUI. Uh, but because you can see what's happening is it, it, it's, it's the uh, for that sort of task it's, it's a slightly more natural tool for the job. What we're going to move on to is a set of things that are hard to do in GUIs, uh, the, the, where, where you're combining commands to do things that would be complicated to do. Well, if not complicated to do, at least potentially error prone and repetitive and annoying to do in. Uh, um, in a, in, a, in, a, in a GUI, uh, we, we all know folk who are Excel wizards who can do extraordinary things uh, in Excel, uh, rearranging uh, data and, and, and combining things in odd ways. But that's advanced Excel usage. What we're going to do now is do the sort of things that are advanced Excel excitingness, which are bread and butter things uh, in in uh, the in the shell. Here we're moving on to the things where the shell is really starting to be unique and uh, and, and show its power, uh, as opposed to just being a slightly odd way of doing something you can do in another way. So, um, how can I combine existing commands to do new things? Uh, this is uh, quite a, a, a key feature of the Unix philosophy, if, if, if you like, the Unix shell philosophy, that you have commands which can do simple things which uh, are designed in such a way that they can be put together to do more complicated things. What we're going to do is redirect command output to a file. Uh, why we want to do that will become clear. Uh, combine chain commands together with, 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 with pipelines and uh, explain what usually happens if uh, a isn't given any, any, any input. And uh, the, the advantage of using this will, I hope, become clear uh, when, when we go, th go, th go through this. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to um, here and <coughs> where are we? We're in this molecules directory. Do ls and we see the list of files. Now we're going to your command wc cubane.pdb. wc um, is, a, is a command that um, there's a word count, and well, let's um, uh, a second. I'm just going to um, but have we met, seen this file before? Um, I'm going to probably be jumping ahead. I, I I I thought we'd seen this command before this point, but I'm going to to to, to cat a file, which means just just type the contents of it. Or, or to display the contents of it uh, or, or on the screen. That's that, that's a data file of, of, of some type. The contents don't matter, but um, that, that's the contents of the file cubing. WC uh, cubing uh, shows, shows, first of all, the number of lines in the file, number of words in the file, the number of characters in the file, and the file's name. And it doesn't show them, it shows them in this very terse format, uh, just those numbers and, and, and names separated by spaces with no headers, no nothing, no explanation. And that seemed initially unfriendly, uh, but it's important for what comes later, that there's no extra uh, decoration uh, in, in this output. Um, if we do wc star.pdb, remember <clears throat> that wildcard refers to all the files that have something.pdb, and we see that it produces the same line of output for each of those files. In each, those, each case, then it's a number of lines, number of words, number of characters, and the file name. And at the end, there's the total number of, of um, uh, lines, words, and characters in the all the files uh, together. Now, we don't have to um, see get all that output every time. If we say instead, um, well, let's do um man wc 
we see that the, the WC command um, has a, a small number of options, C, L, M, and W. We page down. So the option C means just display the number of, of, of characters. Option L means display the number of lines. Option M displays um, the number of uh, multi-byte characters. Ignore that. Uh, that's for uh, different locales. And W is the number of words in each input line. So what we can do, that is telling us, is if you do w, WC minus L, star dot PDB, it displays only the number of lines in each file. Uh, number of words in each file and the number of characters in each file. So we can um, tune the option, tune the output of this command with with the options. Now, say we did um, this WC. And if we look at the man, the man page, it tells us that this argument file is optional. Those square brackets say this this command, this argument doesn't have to be present. So what happens if we just hit WC? Nothing appears to be happening. We'll see in a moment what is happening there. There is something happening there. But if we were to type that, and what's happening is that WC is waiting for you to type something. We don't want to do that yet. So uh, as a quite general point, in this situation, we just type Control C and uh, say, forget about it. You would jump out of the file. Control C will generally um, um, uh, jump out, cancel, uh, terminate um, uh, a, a command that appears to be to be stuck. Um, <clears throat> so we've seen WC minus L star dot PDB, which um, shows the number of lines in each of these files. I want to use this. How do we use this? What we can do is redirect that output, not not show it on the on the screen, but show it, but redirect it to our file length dot txt. As you can see, nothing appears on the screen. What would have appeared on the screen has been redirected to the file length.txt. And if we type cat length.txt, we see what would have been on the screen in, in, in the file just by itself. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, what cat does is it shows the entire file. Um, it, it just dumps it onto the terminal. That's not always useful. More useful, I mean, one, 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 more, more useful just if you want to see the inside of a file is a, is a command called less. Um, uh, Length.txt. Um, and it, 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 it appears to do the same thing. Um, hang on a second. Um, hang on a second. Bear with me. Um, don't, look what I'm don't look what's on the screen. Um, uh, um, yes, lengths. Uh, what, what what command less does is it shows you the contents of the screen of, of the screen and wait and, and uh, waits until you tell it to to stop showing it. Um, <clears throat> you can if it's a long file, you can page down it with pressing the space bar and, and and be just as you can do with the, with the man page, or you can type Q to to, to quit out. I had uh, the, the the option of less in my case was doing something slightly, slightly unusual. So um, the point there is uh, we rather than display the output of the WC command to to to, to the, the screen, we redirect it to, to 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 the file length.txt, and we're able to show the contents of the file length.txt. <clears throat> which exists in this directory. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, in the way that we are now familiar with. Now, let's go up one again. And there's a file called numbers.txt here. What's in there? Numbers.txt. There's number. Of n there's a sequence of numbers. Not entirely surprisingly. Now. There's a command called sort, which sorts an input file. It, 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 it reads a, a file line by line and sorts the output into uh, into order. So what happens if we do sort numbers.txt? Those are sorted. They don't look sorted, 
but they are sorted because by default sort sorts things alphabetically and uh, in an alphabetic sort um, two is ordered after space so that that that's why two and two two are, are both appear before six um, that's the, the, the sort that would be useful if you were comparing uh, you're sorting a, a file with textual contents in this case we want to sort um, the file numerically numbers.txt and now we're, we're, we're seeing the, the contents of that file sort, be sorted in a uh, way which is more what we'd expect so th 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 that's a key thing the, 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 the default behaviour of sort without the uh, the option is an alphabetic sort um, so let's look at this um, sort, a numerical sort of lengths Oops. let's go back into this um, um, uh, is it molecules? Yeah, uh, let's look again at sort numerical of lengths.txt. Um, although th th this file it, it, uh, has both numbers and um, I, 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 and, and file names in it, sort um, sort by the first thing it finds by default. And the first thing it finds was this, this number, which because we have the minus n option there, um, we, we have a, a, a numerical sort. So it does the right thing in, in, in this case. It, uh, the, 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 the file uh, has a number of lines starting with numbers, and when we do it, a numerical sort of those, we end up with the, the right thing happening. Um, now, say we want to, to find the, 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 the line which is uh, shortest, the, the, the file which is, which, which is shortest. We want to, in other words, find the, the file, uh, d discover that the, the, the file methane.pdb with only nine lines in it is the shortest. How do we do that? We, we, we could do it, it's not hard to do it in, in, in this case where there's only six files. But if there were a thousand files in this directory, how would we find the shortest file? This um, uh, wc command would obviously help because it would go through all the files in the directory um, uh, you're working out how many lines were in them, but how do we use that information to find the, the shortest file? We've got a file here called length.txt which has the um, the the line length in it. So what we can do is sort the file uh, length.txt and redirect the output not to the screen but to uh, sorted lengths dot txt and now we've got a file length txt a file sorted length txt sort tab gives us the file uh, the, the same contents as length txt but in a, it but, 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 but sorted and now we use another command head um, uh, to show the first few lines of uh, the file sorted txt now by default the work the command uh, head shows the first 10 lines I, th I think we don't want that what we want is the is to number only the first uh, only one um line from this file sort of length of txt and it shows us the 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 first line of the file it shows the, the first one lines of the file we did did head minus n th uh, three sorted lengths we'd see the first three lines of the file and so this had given us our answer uh, we can see that the the first line of the file sorted lengths is the uh, because we it, it, sorted lengths is the sorted version of the file lengths.txt. The first line of that file is the the, the file with the shortest um, is the name of the shortest file. Um, now what we've that that's our answer. But what we've got here is is two temporary files lengths.txt and sorted lengths you know left over, which we don't really want uh, we'd have to we have to tidy them away afterwards we want, want, can, can we avoid that yes we can perhaps what, the obvious thing to do is to say sort um numerically the file length.txt well let's just save them into, into a new file with the same name and see what happens where's the file gone it disappeared uh, the file length.txt was has such stuff in it before and we've saved it to a file which take the output to a file which had the same name and we would expect what you'd expect to happen 
is for the, the file length.txt to be replaced by a new file with the um, with, with, with sorted contents. But what actually happens is that before this command sort gets going, the shell said, oh, I'm going to be putting the output into this file length.txt, so I'll empty that file now and get that bit over with. At that point, it starts sorting the file, but now there's nothing in the file, so it that's what it was told to do, and take and put the sorted length sort sorted contents of a zero length file into the file length.txt, which is why what we have now is a zero length file. So that's that's an obvious thing to do, but it fails for what when you work it when you work it through is a fa I hope a fairly clear reason. Um, now that uh, it, you you will use this redirection operator uh, the um, let's get that let, let, let get that back um, wc minus l star dot pdb uh, to lengths dot txt um, let's get that back see what's all about cat lengths dot txt um, that, that, that's the redirection operator. The other thing that, that uh, the, a variant of that you'll use is uh, two angle brackets, which also redirect output. Um, oh, um, a, a point is that if I were to say um, the echo command um, does nothing other than write its arguments onto the screen. So if I were to uh, redirect the output of that, echo one, two, three, two, hello. Then uh, I would find the, the, the contents of that in the, the file, uh, hello. What happens if I were to echo one, two, two, three, to the file length.txt? It deleted the contents because this is what, ha what, what happened before. Before the shell gets going on this part of the command, it sees it's going to output the the results to this file length.txt. So step one, delete that file. So uh, when you redirect the output of a uh, of, a, of a, a command to a file, you destroy the file. Let's get back um, this file here. The other way we can, we, 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 the thing we can do here is echo one, two, three, for example, with two um, angle brackets, length dot txt. And now if we do length dot txt, we discover that we have the previous contents of the file plus the new stuff appended. So a single angle bracket will stomp on the file and uh, replace its contents with uh, the output of the command. Two angle brackets will also redirect the output of command, but uh, into a file, but will append. And, and so you can build. You can. Uh, and you'll see that what you can do here is potentially build up in in, in this file length.txt a number of different things and all and, and append them all to the to the end of this uh, file for for later processing. Um, and it, be, it would be useful to go through the the, the, the um, exercise in the uh, in the, the column chapter of the notes to just consolidate in your head what this does because the distance the difference is important, and you will use it quite a lot if you're starting to use the shell to um, its, its its full advantage. Um, and the. Um, Good example of how how, how we'll, we might use this is um, where are we? There's a, uh, it mentions the directory slash data slash animals dot txt. So let's go there uh, slash data animals dot txt head minus n three animals animals dot txt so the first thing is like, I'll do cat. Sorry, Norman, can't see that. Thank you. Um, ah, come on. Okay. Uh, so we will animals.txt. What was in that, that file? There's a 
uh, um, a column of, of dates and, and, and animals. We would head um, SN3 animals txt. We see the first uh, three uh, lines in the file. There's a corresponding command called tail SN2 animals txt. And we see the last two uh, lines in, in, in that file. And so if we go back to here, um, <coughs> if I do uh, head minus three I'll do to, to animals subset txt and then tail m minus two animals txt angle bracket angle bracket animals subset what we find in that file eventually is animals subset is the first three and the last two uh, lines of the file. So the, the point being here, this, this is a rather, a rather silly example, but the point here is that you can build up, um, you can use your sequence of commands to build up, uh, sorry, yeah, using your sequence of commands uh, to build up uh, a, a, a possibly quite complicated um, file which you can use um, uh, later. That's all very well. That's all. all the, the point of that is just to show the existence of these um, files, uh, of, of, of these uh, redirection operators. But all you can do with them is uh, redirect out output to a file. There are other things you can do with the output of uh, of, of, of commands. Because what we did, um, if we go, where are we? Um, oops, sorry. Um, Where, 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 are they? where we want to be is um, uh, molecules. Yep. And we're back to, 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 to this uh, director with lengths and sorted lengths. Now, remember that we managed to find the shortest file by doing wc minus l to save the output of that command into lengths. Then <coughs> we uh, used sort minus n to save the output of, of the sorted version of lens into sorted lens. Then we use head to look at the, fir at the first line of sorted lens, um, uh, uh, sorted lens to find the answer we we're looking for. But that left these two dot, uh, .txt files uh, uh, sitting you know, left behind, which are untidy at the very least. And there's also a lot more typing than we really want. So the other Im crucially important redirection operator is the pipe operator. Here we can do sort minus n lens.txt as we did before. What we did before was we redirected that to uh, so so sorted lens.txt. What we're going to do instead is to use the vertical bar character to take the output of sort.lens.txt and feed it into head minus n one. Uh, oh, ah, <laughs> um, nano lens dot txt. <laughs> um, uh, let's get rid of that. That 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 that's detritus left over from the last uh, um, last example. Control X. <clears throat> so we'll take uh, we'll sort this file and take the the. the um, the first line from it, and we get methane.pdb as we expect. So what's happening here, is important to realise, is that the output of this file, which would normally go to the terminal, to the screen, is being redirected to the input of the head command. Now you notice the head here doesn't have an argument. There's no um, file name at the end here, which would be asked to show the first line of. What head is doing? If that, um, if there is a um, a file there, head minus one uh, sorted lens, then it will it will show the um, first line of that file. But if there's uh, no um, file there, then what head will do is read from its input. What's its input? Say I did uh, just head my, uh, minus n one by itself head seems to freeze. What's it doing? What it's doing is waiting for me to type something. A one, um, and 
I, 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 um, uh, what happened there is it had read one line from 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 from, from what I typed and uh, repeated it and then stopped. So what happened uh, in this case here is that head is reading um, is reading in lines from the pipe that sort is feeding is, is shoveling things into at the other end. It will read the first line for that input and display it. So the end result is this is a, a complicated way of uh, reading the first line of the output of the sort command without an intermediate file. So there's the, 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 what we are missing here is this intermediate file sorted length.txt um, and, 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 and piping the plumbing, the output of this command straight into the input of this, of this command without any intermediate file having to get in the way and, and having to be tidied up afterwards. Okay. Now we did that with um, the file length.txt but we can do it with, but we noticed, that, we noticed that there were two intermediate steps when we did that before. So what we can do is type wc minus l star dot pdb as before. That produces a list of the uh, lengths of each of the files something dot pdb. We're going to pipe that into the uh, input of sort minus n. And again, as before, if sort isn't given a file name, it reads what is given from it's its input and sort that and produces it to its output. So uh, we see there, so that's the output of WC minus L start PDB piped into sort, sorted and then produced on the output. But uh, we can redirect that output as well. We can pipe that in, as, as well into head minus one, which as before will we'll, we'll read lines uh, from the from its input, meaning the output of, of the sort command, read uh, the a, a single line um, uh, from that input and then stop, which gives us the result we're looking for. So we can get rid of this uh, length.txt and sorted length.txt. Back to the list of files we started off. Run the sequence of small commands piped together and get the answer we were looking for. Which, as I said, wasn't a very hard answer to find if, with, when we're just six files, but would be potentially much more complicated if uh, there were thousands of files. And the processing that happened in the middle here is arbitrarily complicated. You, can, you, can, you won't typically type very long commands on the command line, but you could, and you could type them in, 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 a, in a script. Um, and there are no intermediate files files left left lying around uh, afterwards. So this is a, the point here. This is a very powerful technique, a very powerful and very general technique, where the output of one command goes into the input of the of the next command uh, in in the pipeline. Um, let's see. Um, There's more to say there. Um, I don't think there really is. So I'll go back to back to the notes. I mentioned this this uh, brief exercise in the uh, in the notes, and it asks you um, which of these would have the would would find the three files the three files which have the, the smallest number of lines. And I'll talk through this rather than you know, pausing for the the, 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 the solution, uh, because I want to um, uh, keep uh, the momentum up, uh, but and, and because I know you'll have the, the the recording of the of the lectures and the notes afterward. But this first one doesn't work because it uses the wrong redirection operator. That would uh, save the output of the wc command into a file called sort and then get confused by what happens on the rest of the file. So that would, A, create a file called sort, excuse me, in the current directory, and then produce an error. This next one is better. It produces output of WC, yeah, of, of WC. It does sort it numerically, which is good. It pipes the output of that into head n1-3, but that doesn't work 
because the head command would go, what do you mean 1-3? I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means. That, that's not correct syntax as far as the head, the head command is concerned. Head wants a number there. It wants the, the number of, of, of lines to print out. This next one has the same, the correct three commands in the wrong order. So this, uh, what would happen here is WC would produce this these the, the six lines of, of, of output. Head would then take the top three of those in whatever order they are, uh, unsorted, and sort would then sort those three lines. So that so the, 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 that wouldn't produce an error, but it would produce the wrong the, the wrong output. And the last one is the correct answer. So uh, it's good to think through. So, so afterwards, think through those uh, four possibilities and, and and make it so it's clear in your head what why the ones that are wrong are wrong. And this is why the output of WC is so um, terse. It initially seemed rather strange that the output of WC minus L start up PDB. Um, why? What, what? What? What harm would it do to put a to make that a nice table with, with with column headings on the top? The harm it would do is that those headings would get in the way of a pipeline. They would get in the way, and if those headings were appear, appeared in this output, when that output was redirected into a pipeline for sorting or or or, or, or chopping about in, in different ways, those headings would still be there and would get in the way. So that's why a lot of Unix commands are designed to have push outputs in such a terse and, uh, on the face of it, unfriendly format, because they are designed to be friendly to the tools that might use them uh, further down. So these are the components of powerful command lines. So um, let's now uh, go through... Um, I, I, I won't go through it... Um, 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 step by step by step, but there's a useful command here, which um, uh, looks at this file. Um, data. I'll stop txt. Look at this file. Uh, 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 sorry, at, at this file here. Uh, I'm typing another window, but 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 this is the file I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating. Um, what cat does, as we know, is it just concatenates the file uh, to the to the standard output, would normally would normally the screen, but we're piping it instead into head, which takes the top five uh, rows from that, so that's from deer to deer, and, and and puts them to the output of head. Tail reads that and reads the top uh, and reads the last three lines of those five lines, which will be those three. Then we sort in reverse order the, the the output, and so what we would see would be a sorted version of these um, rows in reverse um, alphanumeric order of these numbers here, which means in date order, in other words. So going back to th this one here, we do cat animals.txt uh, we take the first five rows from that take the last three rows of the output there and sort in reverse order and we put, so we end up with the third fourth and fifth rows of the of the input in uh, um, alphabetic order which you can see, because of the of our choice to write these dates in this particular way, is also reverse date order. That's why it's useful to write dates uh, th 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 this way. Um, there's... Bum, 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 let's see... Um, I'm just going to talk through the, the, the other points in this... Um, uh, in, 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 in this chapter, um, because they're not introducing uh, new ideas; they're just using more sophistications of what we have seen already. So there are, uh, as well as uh, one new command, which here is a command called cut, and cut 
it's rather odd, oddly named, but it, it, it tends to, it, it, it's, it'd be better, it'd be better named select, really, or, or something like that. But what it does is it cuts out bits of, bit, bits, bits of a file. What it does is it divides an uh, input file up into fields and selects, uh, um, uh, columns within uh, those those rows. Now, by default, cut expects tab separated value inputs, which is not the most sensible default. I uh, um, I freely agree, uh, but it is the the traditional default. So, in the case of this animals.txt file we see here, a much more sensible delimiter would be a comma. We, we, we want, so this is basically a, C, a comma separated value file, a CSV file. So we tell cut that we want to um, look at this, uh, divide the rows up into fields delimited, option D, by by commas. And we want to show field number two of this. Of this, that's counting with the first field being 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 field one. So what that would would do is looking at this file, it would cut the file up. Uh, into columns del delimited by commas in this in this case and produce the output of field num number two uh, and, and that's what we produce the second column of the CSV file um, if we wanted to uh, um, Actually, this is worth going through, worth, worth stepping through because it, this is a very powerful technique which look, which look a, bit, a bit a bit strange uh, to, to, to begin with. So I will go back to back to Plan A um, and as uh, uh, this example. Now what we'll do we'll cut um, my limiter comma f two and miles.txt and we find the column two in, the, in that. Um, now, what we will also do is um, uh, I don't want to work through all the, oh, I, I, I'm conscious of time, I don't want to work through all the way through this exercise, but I want to show um, one useful thing, which is that th th is this. Um, that command has shown the uh, e extracted column two of this uh, f file. We want to pipe that into sort, and that produces uh, that column two in sorted order. So uh, bear, deer, deer, fox, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit rac ra raccoon. Another useful command, which sounds like it's not a terribly interesting command, but is, is useful really in this sort of context, is to look for unique lines. If we give it that by itself, it produces just uh, the... It, it asks, it, it deletes lines which are the same as the line above them. It doesn't search all the way through the, through, through the file and find all the unique lines and, 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 and sort them. It'll only work on sorted files. So it'll only remove lines which are the same as the line ahead of them. So it removes that line and these two lines, which are because they're the same as the line ahead of them. Another version of that is uh, when it has the the C option, is it doesn't remove um, duplicated lines, but it counts them. Uh, so it produces output uh, like that. So that so say, so say, say this animals that txt uh, file was some huge big. Um, Huge, long, possibly much wider table of, of data. This is how we could count the number of times bear, deer, fox, rabbit, and raccoon appear in that uh, column two. Um, of course, that's something you could do with Excel, um, but it would be that's get, that's getting quite quite complicated as an Excel th as a thing to do in Excel. Uh, that that's getting called Excel programming. Here is just a. Uh, it is a trivial um, tutorial example. Um, something that's that a complicated Excel task is a trivial tutorial example with, with when you're able to pipeline these uh, shell commands uh, t together. So this is indicating the sort of power you have at your fingertips at this point. So I, I think I will just talk through the, the remaining parts of the of the of this chapter for another another brief couple of minutes break to catch your breath. Um, in this uh, other directory, North Pacific Gaia, there, there's a, a, um, 
a number of, of, of data files which are supposedly uh, some bits of data um, extracted from some of the, of, of the Pacific. What this line does here is it counts the number of lines in each file, it sorts them numerically, gets the um, top five rows, and we're able to see that all these files have 300 lines in them apart from one. And the, it, if we know that the, all the lines are supposed to have, all the files are supposed to have 300 lines in them, then that's a sort of quick check what we can imagine doing beforehand that makes us think, hang on, why should why does that have too few lines? Um, what happened there? Ah, yes, but there was some reason why that particular data file is known to be short. But we can do this, these quite powerful, the point is we can do these quite powerful manipulations on possibly quite a large number of files in a fairly trivial way um, where the, the thought, I wish I would like to do this, can turn very rapidly into a few um, well-chosen uh, key, uh, keystrokes. And so on. There are, there are some other examples uh, toward the end of this of, of the section of the of, of the notes. Um, this is worth mentioning just in passing because um, th this is the question of how, how, how would you remove a bunch of, of txt files. Um, this is the, the command that um, would be wanted here. Uh, you say you want to remove all the, all, all the txt files that were in a, in a directory. rm star.txt. Uh, star.txt matches all the files with something.txt and it would remove them. Even if there's a thousand txt files in that directory, it goes boom, they're gone. This one here would remove all the files that had a dot in their name. That's not what you want, almost certainly. This one here removes all the files that are a single character followed by .txt. This one here, though, which looks very like the one above, is not what you would want. Because what that does is it removes all the files which match something, and there's a space there, and a file called .txt. So what that command would do is it would remove everything and a language, probably a, a, a file which probably isn't there at all called .txt. So there's a very important difference between that file, that line, and the one above. That's not apropos of much else in this section, but it's a good thing to be, to be aware of. Um, you can delete lots of files accidentally. This, this is the sort of case where you might want to use rm uh, minus um, uh, 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 rm minus i. But a handy trick, um, see we have uh, um, uh, Say we, we, we thought we wanted to delete all the other all the, all the .txt files in there. We might say rm star .txt, .txt go, hang on, am I sure that's what that, that's going to do, what I think it's going to do? What we'll do instead is to echo and the file. And that shows what we would type, what we would, what we would type, what would, what would happen if we typed that command without the echo. And we'd look at that and go, ah, yes, that is what I meant to do. And so we'd up arrow, up arrow, and uh, give the command for real. So echo is useful. Why, why would you want a, a, a command that does nothing other than, than take back what you what, what, what you gave to it? Um, for this sort of reason, it's a good way of, of debugging a, a, a bit of uh, a well card in a possibly quite uh, destructive command like that. So back here, um, again, I'll recite the, the key points here. What we've learned here in this in, in this section is uh, a first look at the power of the, the shell and the opportunities that it gives you when you go to, when you redirect uh, the output of commands um, not you re redirect them away from the screen and into a file or into another uh, into, into a, a pipeline which uh, allows them to be the, the data to be processed by a number of, 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 of simple commands. Uh, in, in, in an output file. This illustrates the way in which um, one of the strengths of the shell is it consists of a lot of little commands um, which can do one thing well, such as sort, such as uh, remove unique things, such as divvy a, 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 a file up in, in, into columns. And by piping the output of one into the, into the input of another, you can combine these things in imaginative ways to do quite sophisticated um, um, <coughs> data wrangling. Uh, 
of the files in, in your file system. Um, it's possible to spend half an hour you know, carefully building up uh, a single command line. Up arrow is good here. Um, to, to do a quite complicated thing and save that result in a script, which, which we won't have time to come on to later, but which I mentioned in, in, in these notes. In particular, we mentioned WCs for counting, for counting lines worth and, worth and characters. We mentioned cat, which just dumps the contents of a file. Sort, which sorts things alphabetically or numerically. Head and tail, which find the, the, the beginning and ends of files. Redirection with the angle bracket. A redirection with appending, which is the double angle bracket. And the the big deal, which is the, the pipeline uh, uh, character, which takes an output of one file into the input of the next one. Um, and you have a lot of, 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 of flexibility and, and power there. So the next one is about loops. And, excuse me, I won't have time to go all the way through that uh, because we are now a mere 25 minutes away from uh, finishing time. But I want to say a couple of things about this before um, before wrapping up. So I certainly could do with uh, a couple of minutes of break. So it's now 12.36. Let's have a break until 12.40. And then a last push for the last 20 minutes until we get to one o'clock. Okay, four minutes off. Coffee. And a bit of cake.
Okay, um, last uh, um, look at the quotes. Uh, I'm back. Okay, the I want to um, look now at the uh, loops um, section of the the notes, and what I'll do is I'll go through this uh, really quickly um, because I think that the there's a couple of um, points which I want to emphasise, um, which I, I think are useful to highlight. Uh, even though the, 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 it, would, it would take us, as this suggests, 40 minutes to go through the whole, the, the whole thing. There are a couple of things which are important here, which um, I think we can be up can be a payoff even if we don't go through, through, through all the details. I heartily encourage you to look through this in more detail uh, uh, later. So what we've done um, here is the adding a, a, a sort of implicit looping that uh, we've, we've seen uh, in these, um, in the examples we've seen, we've seen already, when we looked at W C minus L star dot uh, P D B, there was uh, that that star dot P D B expanded to, to a number of files, and the W C uh, command did the same thing on all of them. So there was a sort of implicit loop inside the W C command, which uh, we took advantage of. But sometimes we want to look more explicitly than that. And what that means is do the same thing to a number of different files or a number of different words or, 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 or something. And so what to look at is, 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 is the question is, how do I perform the same actions on lots of different files? And what we want to be able to do is write a loop that does blah, blah, blah to a number of different files uh, in, in, in a controlled way. Now, I imagine you uh, will have, have at least some experience of uh, some other programming language, um, wh whatever it be. Um, a very large fraction of programming languages have have a have a loop uh, uh, construct which says do this uh, to, to to all these things, and so to some extent, what we want to um, look at is uh, what a loop what the loop uh, co construct is like in in Bash. Um, now, what we want to do here is we want to go to the directory animals. Yep. Uh, um, where are these? Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> So the, 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 what, 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 it's just what's on these files? Less basilisk. Um, I think this is supposed to be the the <laughs> the genetic data about um, some some of my imaginary animals. So we do head minus n to basilisk dot dat. We see the first two lines of the file. If we look at the um, t tail minus l, uh, the, the last one line of that input. Uh, we get the second line of the file. There'll be other ways. Of, there are other ways of, of doing that sort of thing, uh, of selecting a, a particular um, line of a file. And, and just parenthetically, it's not in the notes, but the way I would do that is there's a, another command, very useful, but uh, you'd want to read the man page, uh, which is a stream editor, which says, um, do it by, uh, by default, but line two, print it, uh, basilisk dat, and that prints out line two of that file. I mentioned that I'm not going to say anything more about said, other than if you are going to get into shell scripting or doing uh, complicated and exciting things with um, the command line, then you want to read the said man page and digest it and um, uh, be edified thereby. So uh, this, the, the, these notes use head and tail quite a lot because they're simple to explain. In live use, you would probably use said more than, than you do either of those. Anyway, back to the script. What this line does is effectively show the second line of the input file, basilisk.dat. We want to do that for each of the files, um, uh, the, each of these uh, .dat files 
uh, that are in this directory. How do we do that? There might be a way of doing that by sort of a wildcard, but here's a good example of where a, 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 a loop is the natural thing to do. So uh, the structure of this is for file name in basilisk basilisk dot dat minotaur dot dat unicorn dot dat. I return and nothing happens yet, but the, you know the, the the prompt has changed from a dollar to an angle bracket. So the shell is waiting for us to type something else before it finishes its stuff. Do something. New line. Head uh, minus n to dollar file name pipe tail n1. Uh, and what happens here is that that dollar file name each time around the loop, that dollar file name is replaced by one by by that that file name there is that file name there. Each time around the loop, that dollar file name is replaced by one of the things that uh, that, that follow the in here. And what happens each time in the loop is this thing, the, the, this command here with that line replaced appropriately. Return done. We're done with the loop, and we produce, get the result we uh, we expect. So that line here came from the first time around the loop with file name being basilisk.dat. That line came from the second time around the loop with file name being minotaur.dat. And that one came from the third time around the loop with uh, file name being unicorn.dat. And you can see that that's a very, um, uh, a very flexible way of uh, approaching things. Now, because we're, we're short on time, I'm going to uh, show you how, that, that, that's, that's annoying to type. So I'm going to show you how you would write that in a script, which is actually covered in the next section. So nano um, uh, name them dot sh. Scripts are usually called shell scripts are usually uh, 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 called something dot 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 sh. And in here, we type um, I've forgotten for file name in my no, in basilisk dot dot uh, my no tor or dot dat and unicorn ah, why can't I type dot dat do uh, head minus n2 file name pipe tail minus n1 uh, done get rid of that uh, control x yes I want to save it name them dot sure. and we find we have a, a script name them dot sure. we do sh sure which is the um, command to run a shell, uh, to get a, a new shell to interpret uh, this, uh, the, the commands in the script, name them, dot sure, and produce the output we expect. And we can do that again and again and again. We don't have to type the whole um, uh, script out again every time. Now, this is also not very flexible because uh, the, the, the names of the files that we are uh, processing are baked into the to, to, uh, to, to the shell script, and what's discussed in the next chapter after this, uh, the the chapter probably on, on on shell scripting is how you can write a shell script which um, can act like a little command, uh, which can uh, be given arguments on the command line just as a, an, an ordinary command would would, uh, would would have, and which can process those uh, arguments passed to it in a, a, a natural way. So this name them dot sure would uh, naturally we, we, we could turn this it shows how we could turn this into a more generally useful command, which would find the second row of of uh, uh, a number of files passed to the, the script on the on the command line. So it means we've added to our repertoire of commands that are available with this new shell script uh, shell script, which we, which we, we, we can use to do. Um, things that are useful to us in our work, which a bit, a bit of custom processing, a custom sh bit, of, bit of custom shell scripting, for which um, we, which no one else would bother to write for us, but which we can quickly put together uh, and save in a, in a script from the components that we have available uh, that, 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 that the Unix shell provides to us. So um, turning back to the, the notes, um, I think I've said 
things like that. Um, there is a distinction between dollar file name. Uh, you can put color brackets around it, um, and that's not wrong. Uh, that the only time that's useful is when there's when when the norm, normally um, in, 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 um, in this case um, the limit of what the the the, the dollar scooped up everything. Uh, up to the next space, or the, the next thing that wasn't a uh, a, a character, I use that as the th thing to refer to. Um, in a case, a slightly artificial case, where um, you have something like this, the if the, if the color brackets weren't there, this would expand to whatever the variable file name expanded to. In this particular case, it allows you to delimit. Uh, uh, part of the thing would be otherwise misinterpreted. Um, I think that's there in that place because it's sort of logically the right place for that uh, point to be made. It's probably not the right place in terms of where uh, you're you thinking is, uh, is yet. Um, this file name, an important point, this file name is, is uh, um, a sensible f variable name, temporary variable name to pick uh, in an example like this much more often. Uh, especially if you're given these commands on, on the uh, on, on one line, uh, it is a much shorter thing. So what I would actually type in that, it, what I would actually type in this in this case, if I wanted uh, to, to, to do this, is for for f in star dot dat semicolon do uh, head might n to f pipe tail n one done, and we get um the same output. Um, the, what this shows is that in this context, the semicolon can act in the same way as a, 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 a new line. And if you're writing a one liner, line, like, liner like one liner like that, then you don't want to bother typing long file, long variable names. And so that's what the sort of thing I would type very you know, almost automatically if I wanted to do the same thing to a large number of files. And you will type that automatically once you've absorbed the, the contents of this. Um, I obviously wouldn't write that in that, that compressed form in a shell script. I would uh, do something that was much more neatly laid out, like uh, like, like like that. But uh, for day to day use, uh, sorry, where is it? That sort of thing, I would uh, find myself typing before I'd even finish the, finish the thought. Um, in the last few minutes. Uh, Or I go, I'll go back to the the notes, and um, I don't think there's an awful lot extra. The, the, the other things that are in the in, in this se section are how to do things like redirecting th uh, things. That that's that's the wrong thing to do, uh, because the, the the redirection each time around the loop that file will, will be stomped on because of the behaviour of the redirection operator that we discussed a little while ago. Um, you can append things and look that that would work. Um, there are other ways that uh, things uh, could work. Um, this is the sort of context where uh, having a space and a file name will allow you to shoot yourself quite effectively in the foot because uh, what's happening here, b because the shell uh, delimits its arguments, the, the, each of the arguments to a, to a command is a word separated by, by spaces. And once you start looking at variables and their expansion, the, the rules about what's expanded when can be rather confusing. And are pr and, and if you have files with spaces in their names, you will confuse yourself at, the, at, this, so at this sort of point. So this, is, this, is, this sort of place is why uh, you learn, you realize, oh, that's why we don't have spaces and file names. Uh, um, we can progress in the last minutes, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's good advice here about how to debug uh, shell scripts, in include e echo here and there to, 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 to see what happens. Um, other good advice about um, how, to, how to create our, how to create scripts and, uh, and process them. Um, and also, some some useful remarks about the history command. Uh, all the the commands that I've typed in the in the course of this of the shell session are stored for me, and I can see that the the the, 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 the command history shows those files. 
I can see the last five lines of that by just chopping the last five lines off of the, of, of the history command and you can see the, the, file, the, the file itself is in there. And that's occasionally useful, but the really useful thing about the history command is that there are a couple of, 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 of little um, history facility. There are a couple of, of, of shortcuts which really save a lot of time. That, I, gave, I gave that command, history pipe tail n5. What, what if I want to give that command a second time? Uh, well, it's, what I can do, uh, another thing I can do is, I I see that that, that command there, cat name them dot show. I can say, bang, two seven four six do two seven four six do. You're not on the terminal. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then that last couple of remarks will not have made a lot of sense. Um. <laughs> uh, um. Uh, the history command. Uh, I'm running a short time. Oh, four minutes ago. History command shows all the commands that I typed uh, in, in in this session. I can do things like uh, um, uh, crop that list uh, short and see the last five uh, uh, commands um, in display like this. I can also pick and choose what what, what, what commands to, to to use. So I can do things like um, I see that cat name them dot show was the two thousand seven hundred forty eighth. Um, command I typed, so I can say I want to repeat that one again two seven four eight, and I repeat that command again. I don't do that one. You don't do that very sort of thing very often because it's it's complicated to do. So there's a much better handy way of doing that, which is bang, cat, and that redoes the last command that started with the word cat. Uh, so if you, if if you if you find yourself up arrowing repeatedly to do to, to reuse a complicated command you used recently, then exclamation mark and the start of the command is a way of reusing uh, that um, uh, re reusing that command in a very efficient way. Word of advice: don't do that with rm, because at some point you will not be recovering the rm command you thought you were recovering, and so that's a really clever way of of of, of smacking it from the back of the head by. Uh, reusing commands uh, uh, carelessly, but the other, uh, if you w just want to reuse the last command, then it's even it's even easier. Just two exclamation marks reuses the last command. And the last thing I'll mention here is that uh, you can also refer to bits of the last command. So if I wanted to echo uh, to to, to um, I, I could have wanted to type echo the exclamation mark dollar, which uses the last word in the previous command. It expands to the command echo name them dot show, which produces the output name them dot show. And that's, you think, that's a rather strange edge case. Why would that be useful? It's useful all the time. <laughs> because quite often you you, you want to, re you, you, you might do ls blah. Uh, and, I, I, and I think, oh yeah, that was the right thing. I want to remove those files, rm exclamation mark dollar, and remove the, the, the same, um, uh, I, I put it, it, it before. I must drag myself to a screeching halt at, the, at, at this point. I'll move back to this. Um, it mentions other uh, history commands. Uh, Control R allows you to search uh, back in the history for previous commands. Double exclamation mark um, receives the immediately preceding command, and exclamation mark dollar proves the last word of the last command. Uh, and this usefully, I think what I said this earlier, um, mentions that um, echo is useful when debugging uh, commands. So that's all of the loop stuff. The last chapter uh, is about shell scripts. It's quite a long uh, chapter which has useful stuff in it. All of good stuff which we don't have time to, to go through. But uh, I think we have now done in three hours what the timetable said would take um, Actually, three hours. <laughs> so uh, the, the it, there's I I I, I forgot our, our final chapter on on finding things, which is using, I think, uh, grep, which is a command which allows you to, which, it, 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 it is a command which allows you to search for words in a in a file, used all the time. Um, I do encourage you to go through that section that that that, that section uh, when you have the leisure uh, later. Um, it's searching for things and files, something you do all the time.
Uh, I think it was also mentioned the uh, the command find, which allows you to find a particular file uh, somewhere in directory. You've forgotten. You know this file is called something. You know the, you know the file's name, but you've forgotten what it is. Find will let you find that tr uh, that file in the directory tree. And at that point, I um, did the summary of the last chapter. Find grep, and it mentions man again. Um, there are also wonderful things. I'm forced to come screeching halt. Bang on one o'clock, and I will now hand back to Daniel, who will, uh, in the last few, in the closing moments of the session, uh, sum it all up magnificently. Oh, no pressure. Uh, thanks very much, Norman. So, yeah, I, I think what is really remains for me to say is that we'll see you again this, uh, at the same time next week, so at 10 a.m. next Friday, for the next session, which is on Make, which is a specific tool for automating um, processes, particularly build processes for software. Um, I do encourage you all um, between now and then to both have a look at the uh, the notes again for this session and to go over things which maybe um, we rushed through a little bit too yeah. fast. Um, there is a help form on the middle page where you can feel free to ask any questions which you have between now and then and I will try and uh, keep an eye on that over the next week. Um, uh, otherwise, I think unless anybody has any questions or has thought of anything else, then I will let everybody get on with having lunch or enjoying the storm. Uh. Oh. All right. Uh, there are no takers. So uh, thanks, everyone, and see you next week. Look forward to it. Bye-bye.